You're listening to Soap Dirt, the latest in television entertainment news. Hey, Days fans, it's your girl Belinda from Soap Dirt here, and we need to talk about when and where Clyde Weston is going to pop up because I think we all know that Southern Scoundrel is not gone for good. He is far from done, and I do fear that Johnny Demera might pay the price for being the son of EJ Demera. Let's dig in and talk about how karma might come for the dirty drug dealer turned district attorney of Salem. But please click subscribe if you have not. And now let's talk about it. So we have a couple of strange things happening that I feel like cannot be coincidences. First, we have two dastardly criminals on the loose, Clyde and his very young paramour, ex-Salem police officer, Rebecca Goldman. Second, they declined to hop on the plane that Ava Vitali arranged for his escape. Third, we have Johnny Demera and Chanel Dupree heading out of Salem to a remote location for their honeymoon. I feel like this is a perfect storm of strange circumstances that are leading to a blow up that should finally end Clyde Weston's terrible comeback this time. And I think he's about to get a chance to take aim at his ex drug runner pal, EJ Demera. The Horton Cabin, if you don't recall, is outside Salem. It's on Smith Island, and it has seen a lot of action over the years. There have been fires, children born there, family vacation, lots of romance, affairs, And Sarah Horton offered it to Chanel and Johnny this week, and they eagerly took her up on the offer, which to me itself seemed a little strange. Those two like to travel to Italy and other first class destinations, a remote cabin on an island doesn't seem much like their style. That's a big red flag to me, and it definitely looks like it's a setup for a big dramatic plot point, a twist. And we have Clyde and Goldman on the run. He would not take the airplane because he didn't trust a pilot hired by the Vitalis. He needs to hide out with his dirty little cop girl long enough to figure out what's next. I have seen on soap social media, some people think... It is improbable that Clyde would go to the Horton cabin to hide there when he killed Abby, who's a Horton by blood. Hum, okay. Just to be clear, there is nothing Clyde would not do. Nowhere that he would not go. He has got brass cojones as big as those red balls out in front of Target stores. And you never know, EJ might have actually mentioned the cabin to Clyde back in the day when they were drug running buddies working together because, you know, EJ's been there and he's done some things that are quite memorable. What's really funny is Johnny might think twice about taking his new wife there if he knew about the action that his dad got at the cabin. Do you remember before Dan Fioregal was in the role, it was James Scott playing him? And back when he was EJ, he had a fling with Abby, and it all started at the Horton cabin. EJ went there to talk to Abigail. They argued, and then they had some really hot sex. So that might give Johnny a bit of pause, and it's another reason I think the cabin is a suspicious honeymoon choice, because EJ might have told Clyde, oh yeah, you know banged my sister-in-law there. Plus, I really doubt Clyde is done. The way he left, basically just all these loose ends hanging, I just don't think they're going to leave them unaddressed. Gabby remains in jail, but hopefully will be safe from Clyde now that he's on the loose. Stefan's turning himself into the police by the end of next week, and he'll be off screen for two months because Brandon Barish is on paternity leave. Those are two loose ends, but Clyde himself and Goldman, that's another loose end as are the cops that are looking into the escape and they're trying to figure out who helped Clyde get loose. And there's there's the whole matter of the bad pills that caused Holly Jonas's overdose. The person who shot Harris issue, of course, we know it was Stefan. Harris does too, but he hasn't told the truth. All loose ends. Harris is so busy 
trying to cover for Ava that he's screwing over Xander, Sarah, and their little baby by keeping him wrongly in jail. Next week, Xander is finally out on bail, but he shouldn't need bail. The charges should be dropped if Harris would just tell the gosh darn truth. All right, anyway, back to Clyde. I suspect he may want to keep his drug empire running now that he's on the outside and can spend all that money he was raking in. But he needs to hide somewhere outside of Salem where the cops won't stumble across him, but close enough to Salem to keep his eye on the operation. That makes the Horton cabin the perfect location. And if Clyde is there with Goldman, when Johnny and Chanel show up to do their honeymoon thing, I can only imagine that he will seize the opportunity to get himself out of the tight spot he's in. And I think it'd be pretty ironic if Clyde gets his hands on Johnny. Remember, months and months ago, Stefan pleaded with EJ to help him with this Clyde problem once and for all. Stefan wanted EJ to have the Demera mercenaries just kill him. Kill him once and for all. You'd think EJ would have had sympathy. After all, you know, at one time, EJ had feelings for Abby, and then Clyde murdered her in cold blood in their family home. But no, he didn't care. He told Stefan, kick rocks, solve your own problems. And now I think EJ's apathy and his cruelty towards Stefan is going to come back and bite him right in that juicy hot butt of his. So can you imagine how over overjoyed Clyde would be if EJ's son waltzed into the cabin and right into his greedy, very violent hands. Can you imagine EJ getting a call from Clyde saying, I've got your son, here's my list of demands, or I'm going to send him back to you in pieces because EJ knows that Clyde would do it. I mean, Holding Johnny hostage is the perfect final play for Clyde Weston. EJ's got the money and the resources to get him and Goldman out of Salem and set them up for the rest of his life. I fully suspect that's what we're about to see. There are too many red flags that this is all about to come full circle. EJ refusing to help Stefan take care of Clyde is going to come back to haunt him. I guarantee it. I don't guarantee it. I I. 93% guarantee, not 100%, no money back. All right. I personally cannot wait to see the look on EJ Damaris' face if, if this storyline does indeed go this way. Of course, that's an if. I'm not saying there's confirmed spoilers yet, but this is what I feel like is happening. I know Ron's writing. I know the show. I know the history. Of course, no matter what transpires with Clyde, you know, Johnny and Chanel definitely survive because I've seen behind the scenes footage of them filming this week. So whatever happens, they're okay. Rest assured. Spoiler alert. As for Clyde Weston, I cannot imagine that EJ would take it lightly if the guy takes his son hostage. In the end, I think EJ EJ might take ultimate revenge on Clyde. Remember, uh, EJ shot Clyde a couple of times in the park that day when Chad attacked Clyde and then Clyde got the better of Chad and was going to kill him in the park. And then Chad and EJ just stood there watching while Clyde was bleeding out. He begged them to call 911 for help and they didn't, but then the cops showed up and saved his rotten life. So yeah, I am certain Clyde is holding a big grudge against EJ and EJ is definitely holding one against Clyde because that's the guy who shot him and why he was presumed dead for all those years. They hate each other and it all could come to a head soon. We'll see how it goes. But for now, drop your comments. Please subscribe and definitely come back soon. And as always, it's Belinda from Soap Dirt. Thank you for being a loyal listener. Follow us wherever you get your podcast because you don't want to miss the next episode. Soap Dirt is on all the major podcast platforms, including Apple Podcast, Spotify, iHeartRadio, and more. <laughs>